educating the prisoners, giving them meditation programs, giving them vocational skills, giving them clean food, clean living, safe living, non-violent living, harmonious living, all listed in Justice Krishnaya's judgments. So Mr. Justice Krishnaya is the father of prison reforms. I followed him to the letter and spirit. Mr. Justice Krishnaya did it for the whole nation. I did it in my own small way for the prisoners. Whatever Mr. Justice Krishnaya said is across the country, whether it's a prison in South, North, East or West, every prisoner is a beneficiary of the vision and foresight and the letter, the power of the pen of Mr. Justice Krishnaya. The judgments he pronounced brought new light to the dark prisons. Jailile irinda borigalil Surya Pragacha terum shudha vayu irum praveshana nalgiya da Justice P R Krishna yera. Ayreti tola ayreti ambatte idel mandri ayiri ke koora di morigal kulil pradigal bilagnu vikanda dadhiya nirodhchu. Jail pulli galada veesha mati oru saatharana Malayali yude e veesha therapy chida adhega man. Mood central jaili galilum. Candy in the world. Jail pulling a cool in Alguna airpad, Adihamana Arabic. Jail Sunar Senatinum Paroli Mulla Saukeringal, Kudu the Ludaramaki. Central Jail Gil, Pudyoga Wum, Prasanga Wum, Mandeva Sigal at a Kalaprakat and Angla Ulpati, Varshiga Koshangal Nadat. Yuakala at Adavagar, Padikan, Parit Shed the Anula Saukering Lerpatium, Sri Krishna Yerana. It was shortly. After his release from prison, Krishnayar built his dream house, which he referred to as the paradise on earth. It was a sprawling mansion made of teak, rose and jackwoods in eight acres of prime land, abundant with coconut palms facing the Talasheri beach. After a vigorous session of tennis in the evenings, Krishnayar used to relax with his wife Sharada in the bench behind his house, intently watching the sea. Krishnaya, who had been imbibing the ideologies of Gandhiji and Nehru, with a little left-leaning, contested the first general elections in India in 1952 under the new constitution as a candidate of the KM. PP Communist Alliance. He won election and became a member of the Madras Legislative Assembly. When reconstitution of the states took place in 1956, the MLAs from Malabar were relocated to Kerala. In the first general elections of Kerala in 1957, Krishnayar contested as an independent candidate from the Talasheri constituency. He became minister in the first ever democratically elected communist government in the world, handling J, social welfare, electricity, irrigation and inland navigation departments. As irrigation minister, he formulated new and innovative methods for irrigation. In order to augment the power generation, he designed new hydroelectric projects. Kutyadi project in Koriko district and the Potundi project in Palakkad are the crown jewels of these pioneering efforts. When EM's ministry was dissolved in 1959, Krishna Yair did not return to Talasheri court. Instead, he commenced practice at the High Court of Kerala in Ernakulam. Another SLA election arrived in 1965. The Communist Party could not think of any candidate other than well-known Krishnaya for the Talashri constituency. But the party had one big condition. Krishnaya must contest the elections under the Communist Party symbol, which was not acceptable to Ayer. As a result, Krishnaya contested against the party candidate as an independent and lost the elections. 23 votes. He then turned practice at the High Court. The election tribunal, which heard the appeal, declared Krishnaya elected by seven votes. When Krishna was at the peak of his profession, the then Chief Justice, Mr. M. S. Menon, saw his cousin for being appointed as a judge of the High Court. Krishna was sworn in as a judge of the High Court on 2nd July 1968 and continued in that position till July 17, 1973. Even though he was a High Court judge only for a brief period, he judiciously used the law at his disposal and pronounced judgments with the sole objective of ensuring that justice was done. I know Krishna. And Sirless 1957-58 period, I used to engage Krishna as senior advocate to appear for me in appeals for the case which I dealt with in the trial court. And uh, on occasions when I sat next to him in the high court, the arguments were not nearly the fluent flow, it was a pro standard. 
the legal physiology, legal terminology, very inimitable to him. His, his vocabulary is, 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 is by himself. Nobody can process the vocabulary. And then suddenly he became a judge the high court. A position which we never expected that he will accept, considering the British practice he was commanding at the time. He accepted high court judgeship. The salary of the judge was not even one portion of one piece of one case he was getting. So he would have been a great sacrifice on his part. Fortunately for the country, he was elevated without becoming a chief justice. And he marked his presence in the high court during the short period. During his tenure in high court, Justice Krishna appears to have touched on almost all the fields of law. The basic concept that I have been able to trace through his judgments is that there is always an embedded constitutional vision in almost every order or judgment, either short or long. This particularly reflects the fact that he had glowing inside him a constitutional vision of continuity in his own practical manner of putting things to use for the entire Republic of India. Later it grew that these concepts were brought in to globalize his vision beyond the constitutional limits of a particular nation. Be it handling labor disputes, civil disputes, criminal disputes, land reforms matters, whatever be the jurisdiction, he had always shown an inclination to think by creating an alchemy of the different parts of the constitution, particularly the directive principles of state policy being taken at tandem with the fundamental rights and fundamental duties, etc., etc., which could be conceived in the constitutional front. While he was the judge of the High Court, Krishnaya's best friend, Mr. Mohan Kumar Mangalam, asked him to become the member of the Central Law Commission at Delhi. The solid advice of his dear friend that working as a member of the Central Law Commission under the chairmanship of former Chief Justice Dr. Gajendra Gadkar would benefit Krishnaya in the long run made him relocate his workplace to Delhi. Thereafter, Delhi became the centre of his activities. Staying at a fine bungalow at 7AB Pandara Road in New Delhi from September 1971, Krishnaya carried out his activities for the Law Commission. The draft document that Krishnaya prepared as the chairman of the Central Council for Legal Aid to the Poor later on became the country's most important basic document for providing legal protection to the poor and the weaker sections. <laughs> This is a concept of Justice Krishnairan. In the year 1982, an expert committee was named Rule of law is almost rule of life as far as an Indian citizen is concerned. This is a concept of Justice Krishnairan. Aduanda then, Nema Sahayam in Nulla, Uri Victike, Kurkauna, Barnegadanella, Audari Mella, Adur Victid, Abagasamana, in Nuluru, Asham, Audri Pijunda, other Kavalam, Samstanangal, the Matram, Urutraitam Lainum, Barnegadana, Adisha the Maya, Kendratin Rutravaitanga Kodiana, in the Audri Pijunda, Adanuru, we have a star with the Maya Gadanundagi. On seventeenth July, nineteen seventy three. Krishnaya was elevated as the judge of the Supreme Court. In the following seven and a half years, the long hallowed corridors of the Supreme Court had the privilege to bear witness to heated discussions on various new principles of law that were unheard of hitherto. The journey of Krishnaya from this chamber 
through the sprawling verandas to his court number three resulted in hundreds of judgments combining justice with compassion. Justice Krishnaya, and in my view, his whole life was a documentary. A documentary on how best the judiciary can manage to uplift the people of this country, particularly those who have been deprived and are in need of sustenance. He was a host unto himself for the year, eight or nine years that he sat in the Supreme Court. He distinguished himself as a champion, not only a champion of the poor and the needy, but a champion of human rights. What is more striking about Krishnaya is that he lived till almost 100 years. And perhaps his post-retirement years were the most fruitful for the country because he became, by reason of his utterances and his interjections at the right time, the conscience of the nation. In the case of an IFS official, Muttamma, Justice Krishnaya displayed exemplary courage and exceptional acumen in striking down the relevant provision of law that had tinges of gender discrimination. People say and criticize he writes such long judgments, look at his English, why is it like this? So I once asked him, sir, why do you write such long judgments? His answer to me was, look, it's important for me to educate my brother judges. It is important for me to educate the bar. As I said, I grew up in his shadow. I know that after me, there are many generations of lawyers who have been influenced by his work and also by the fact that people like me carried it forward. So this is, I will always remember Krishnayar as a, as a pioneer of a new jurisprudence for the oppressed sections of society. No doubt, when it came to women, obviously he is the judge who wrote the judgment in Muttama's case, where he questioned why marriage should be a reason to be disqualified, uh, disqualified from being in foreign service. So we know of his commitment to gender justice. And uh, fortunately for us, we have been able to carry it forward. Krishnaya had always stood for the freedom of the downtrodden and their innate liberation, thereby adding an ethereal glow to his entire career. I personally met Justice Krishnaya after I went to Cochin as the Chief Justice of Kerala in 2010 March. Coming to Justice Ayer's uh, contribution to law, two areas where Justice Ayer's uh, contribution is very profound, in my opinion, are uh, prison reforms and the rights of the convicts. The other area where uh, Justice Ayer's contribution is very profound, in my opinion, is the election law. There, uh, perhaps Justice Ayer had an advantage more than any other judge uh, because Justice Ayer not only was a great lawyer and a great judge, he was actually involved in politics, he, he contested elections. So that understanding can immensely helped uh, Justice Ayer's uh, formulating the various concepts of uh, election law. While residing at this house at 2, Teen Murthy Mark, one of the greatest tragedies of Krishnaya's personal life occurred. The untimely demise of his beloved wife, Srimati Sharada Krishnaya. Their divine matrimony had lasted just 33 years. Sharada Krishnaya's 
ill health started with an acute breathing problem during one of their Nainital trips. Mrs. Krishnaya survived a subsequent heart surgery at the All India Institute of Medical Sciences, but the underlying heart condition remained unresolved. She was taken to the United States for advanced treatment. She was admitted to the St. Mary's Hospital at Milwaukee, presently known as Columbia St. Mary's. Two surgeries close on the heels of each other, but unfortunately, her heart had stopped beating at the end of it all. Sharada was always an everlasting memory for Krishnayar. Amidst the disciplined and the demanding lifestyle of Krishnayar, Sharada always acted as a soothing and comforting melody of Veena. Krishnayar had always surrendered before her unrelenting love and affection. Veer Krishnayar had never once believed that his wife was indeed dead. When he once revealed that he was often in communion with his departed wife's soul through a medium, it raised a virtual storm of heated debate and controversy. I had arbitration case in ചെയ്യാൻ <laughs> <laughs> Sarada Krishna is the death in the period of made a movie like you could do one. I would say, what are Manohur Mai Sari Gilum, Bangles, Kiring Loka, and then Nerthi Vichirigan. Other than Arthur General Sarada Krishna, I would not pay any poetry, I would not track it. Paniait, okay. I used to talk to her every day in this room. collaboration with different voluntary organizations and individuals, several institutions were established to commemorate Sharada Krishnayar. Scholarships, endowments, libraries, fine arts societies, women empowerment projects and so on.
Sharada Krishna Sadgamaya Foundation for Law and Justice, of which Krishna.